This is the video for Unit 3, Lesson 19 on Collision Detection. So you're going to click on the overview, let that page open up in Canvas, and in this lesson you're going to learn how to use the Is Touching code block to determine when two sprites are touching. You're going to need to read and complete all the content materials and activities and then turn in your lesson assignments. Click next to go to the next page and you can see here, read through this lesson page and you are going to be using the is touching uh, code block and the sprite debug code block in the code.org activities. You click next and here is an example that you need to read through this part of the lesson that shows you how the is touching block works. When one sprite is touching another sprite, what's supposed to happen? So this goes over collision detection, which is the is touching, and then it goes over colliders using the set collider button, or not button, but the block, code block that you're going to use in code.org. So we have two different types of colliders here. You have colliders that are shaped in a rectangle shape and then in a circle shape. So you're going to learn about colliders and the is touching block in code.org. When you've read through this, then click next. And this takes you to the assignment page. Go ahead and click collisions and make a copy. And on this assignment page, you can see that there are three skill building activities, one practice, the rainbow horse, which is an assessment activity, and then you have to choose one of the challenges. Let's go to code.org. Now we're in lesson 19, collision detection in code.org. We're on level one. This is a sample game called dinner time. So I want you to run the program to see the robot bring the bunny dinner. When the bunny reaches the bowl, they both stop walking and the bowl becomes empty. What code do you think would help the computer know if two sprites were touching? So let's run this. And when they touch, then the bowl becomes empty. So you're just going to think about that. And then you can either click the finish button to go to level two, or you can click level two here at the top. At level two, this is another prediction. So you're going to click and drag so you can see where to put your answer here. And you can't run anything because it wants you to look at the code here. So it says using math to figure it out. Computers use math to figure out whether two things are touching. So it says look at the math on lines 17 and 18 of this program to see how the sprite properties are compared with their width to see whether they are touching. So all of this code right here, and that's a lot of code, and you have to read through it and it says if the bunny's x position is greater than the dinner's x position and the bunny's x location minus the dinner's x location is less than the bunny's width divided by 2 plus the dinner's width divided by 2, and you can keep reading this on. All of these conditions that you see right here in line 17 and 18 have to be met for that activity to happen. So this is a lot of mathematics. Well, they have solved this by creating a code that does, uh, like a block code, that does all of this math for you. So let's go to level three to see how this works. In level three, you're introduced to the is touching block. So just like I said before on the last level, writing out the math each time you want to check whether the two sprites are touching can take a while. So a programmer created that is touching block that can do that checking for you, all that mathematics checking. So in the code down here, they want you to, inside the draw loop, drag the is touching block that you see right here into the if block. You can click the show me where button or link here to show you where to place that. And there you go. That's where you should place it. Now, now that you're going to bring that block over, hint, don't forget to change the sprite to bunny and the target to dinner. And then run the program. And if it works, then go ahead and click your share button, copy that like you normally do, and paste that into your assignment. Let's 
go to level four. So now you're getting some um, practice with the is touching block. So on this one, the blender should only turn on when the apple touches it. So let's run this. So the blender's already on when it should only be on when the apple touches it, similar to the upper right here. So it says, do this, use the new code you've learned, which is the is touching block, to check whether the blender is touching the apple. Use a conditional, that means the if statement, remember, to only shake the blender when the apple is touching. You will need to drag two blocks into your workspace. That's your hint. Okay, so you've got the is touching you're gonna use, and then you have the control for the if. Okay, so you need to drag those blocks into this area, the draw function, and then add that is touching statement to that. Okay, once you have that figured out and it's working, like at the upper part here, like you, the example, then go ahead and click the share button and get your link and then paste it to the assignment. Now don't forget, there's helps and tips right here that you can go back through to help you with the code if you don't know how to do that code. Or you can go backwards and look at the previous levels. Let's go to level five. Level five is a debugging collisions. So let's go ahead and run this. So it says the balloon is popping before the tack touches it. You can use the debug block to get more information about the bug in the program. So you want to use your arrow key and use the arrow keys and oh, the pin or the tack, it popped the balloon before I even got close to that balloon. So there's something wrong. It shouldn't do that. When I start moving the pin or the tack, all of a sudden it pops the balloon, but I never touch the balloon. So there's something wrong with it. So just do this, run the code, use the arrow keys just like I did. In the code below, change the balloon debug to false and the balloon debug to true. So you can see here, balloon debug equals false, change that to true. Add a new debug code to the code set and set the tax sprite property debug property to true. So it wants you to add it for the tack. So here's the balloon debug. You need to set this to true and then you need to bring over this block here, this sprite debug over for the tack. And then set that one to true. Run the code again and then think about why is the balloon popping early. Okay, so I'm going to probably show you this really quick so that you can kind of see what's happening here, but if I put true and I put true over here just to kind of give you an idea of how this is happening, when I reset that, you see what's created here? This is called the debugging, the collision. So right now, that's why the tack, think about why is the tack popping that balloon? Because this collision or collider needs to be closer to the shape of the balloon and not so far out there. Okay, so figure out the rest of this one, adding in what it tells you to do, and then when you have it working, then share, click share, copy the link and post it on your assignment. Then go to level six. So I gave you a little hint on that one. So now you have debug is touching or circle collider. So you get to choose one of these. So you get to choose one. That's your practice. So if you choose the debug is touching on this one, you need to figure out why it's supposed to have the bunny is supposed to change to a smile instead of a sad bunny when the sun touches it. So the bunny sprite should change to a happy bunny, but nothing happens when they collide. So it says modify the code so that the collision is detected with the draw loop. So here's your collision detector. It's the is touching, All right? So you're gonna use the is touching and you're gonna put it within the draw loop right here, okay? And then remember, you gotta change the names, the sprite, and what's the target that it's hitting. 
So it's got to be here in the draw function, and this is the code you're using. So once you figure that out, so that when the sun hits the bunny, that the bunny changes to a happy face versus being sad. Or you could do the other one. And on the other one, it's just collision, again, this collision detectors. So this is the set collider, and you need to get this to happen. So when you run this, the colliders are a rectangle shape. Well, you need to set the collider to a circle shape so that it's more accurate, okay? So the colliders are set in the wrong shape. So you can read down here and you can see the debug. So you're going to change coin one collider here, change coin two collider there. So make sure you go to sprites in your toolbox and you can see the set collider block right here. So you're just going to drag it over for the coin one, drag it over for coin two. And once you've got those and then reset it, run it, once you have those with the circle around them versus the rectangle, then you have completed your activity. So then you would, you know, click the share button, get your link, and then go on to level seven. So again, it's your choice on level six which one you want to do. This is the rainbow horse. So when the rainbow touches the horse, it should turn into a unicorn. So let's run the code and it doesn't change to the unicorn. So you need to add code that changes the, this horse sprite's appearance to a unicorn when the rainbow touches it. And if you look down here, they kind of give you a hint. You're going to put your code right here. It says change the horse to a unicorn when the rainbow touches it. So just a few hints right there. You're going to again use that is touching block and you're going to place it down in here, but you're also going to have to use something else that I'm showing you right there first. So you're going to need these. They get to set a condition there that, you know, if something happens when this occurs, if this occurs, then you need to change that animation to a unicorn. So you're going to be using several blocks here that you need to put in here along with this is touching. So once you've got that figured out that, you know, if the, if the rainbow touches that horse, when it touches that, if it touches it, then the animation turns to a unicorn. So I've just pretty much told you the blocks you're going to need. You're going to need at least, I'm going to give you a hint here, you're going to have three blocks. Okay, once you've got that figured out and it works, then you click the share button, get your link and paste it into your assignment and go to level eight. This is the challenge. So you can either choose A or B. If you're going to do A, A is um, you need to get it to look like this where the collider fits that rolling pin. Okay, so it makes the, when collisions happen between sprites, it makes them better. So it says here, when I first run that, do you see how the collider is really big? And so it needs to be going the same direction, uh, just like you saw back on the, back out here, where it needs to look like this. So then in here, it says add the collider to fit the rolling angle, the collider to fit the rolling pin. Use the set collider. It can take on more parameters than just the shape. You can do the X position, the Y, the offset, the width, the height, and the angle. Check out the documentation for an example. So you can click here and it'll take you to a, where you can look at how to use right here. There's the set collider. So you can go look there and see how that's used. So in this, you have your set collider right there, and it says use set collider with all the perimeter parameters. So you would, you know, just put it right there, and then you add your parameters by clicking this right button right here. And I need five more, because there's a total of six. So I'm gonna keep clicking, 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 and there's six, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And then you're gonna use parameters in here. 
So here is your X position, your Y position. This would be the width in pixels, the height in pixels, and this would be the rotation of it. So you're going to put numbers in here until you can get that collider angle to be different. So again, if you look at the documentation, just to kind of give you a hint, try using these numbers here and input those and see what happens. So if I do 0, 0, 20, 80 minus 45, just to kind of see what happens, 0, 0, 20, 80, and then I think that was a negative 45, and then run that. Oh, need to name that sprite roller, right? Now reset it and run it. Ah, you can see there's my collider, but now I'm going to have to adjust some of these parameters in here so that it turns and then you change the length and the width so it matches that of the, of the uh, rolling pin. Once you've got that fixed so that it's set that way, then you would um, go ahead and click share and then get your link and paste it in your document. So that is the challenge. That's one of the challenges. And then you had the debug that you can also do. And that debug challenge, again, uh, this is about points. So if you run it and um, when that sprite goes up, okay, see all those points? It keeps giving me points when it only should give me one point. So there's something going on. So you need to read and run the code to understand how it works to see what's going on. Identify the line of code that increases the score. Add an additional line of code so that at least one sprite moves to a new random location. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult, but if you read through the code right here, you could probably figure it out. Okay, so if you need help, go to the help and tips. Um, again, with level eight, you can choose either the collider at an angle or add points on collision, either one of those. That is it for lesson 19 on collision detection.